Hey everybody around the world, come come, gather around the doom stream. Today's December 14th, my name is Reagan, and this is the Arctic Report card among other news around the planet. Please, take a moment to thumb up the video, I'll give you a second. Great. Let's get to 50 on this one, guys. I'm going to start with the warmest Arctic summer on record is evidence of accelerating climate change released from NOAA published two days ago from the top document new records showing that human caused warming of the air ocean and land is affecting people ecosystems and communities across the arctic region during 2023 the warmest ever observed in the arctic while the highest point in greenland's ice sheet experienced melting only for the fifth time in the 34 year record overall it was this arctic's sixth warmest year on record it continues to, to decline more on this in a moment however quote the overriding message from this year's report card is that the time for action is now says rick spinrad phd noah administrator mm-hmm yes action what about that as we can see the charts cannot enlarge that but you can tell detect greening over the past four decades as well from NASA and NOAA satellites in the regions surrounding it. Peak summer greenness in 2023. What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Just how warm were the past several months? Published from Elliot Jacobson, professor, excuse me, uh, record um, graph of average surface temperature for August, November, covering the years of 1940 to 2023. Up and away we go. What does this mean? It means that CO2 levels are at their highest point ever from CO2levels.org. In addition, methane has taken off. You guys are aware of this. And gals. Another way from the Arctic sea ice minimum extent from NASA, we can see a at least 12.2% rate of change per decade. Just imagine where that's at in the next following two decades. <sighs> Big sigh. White Christmas is unlikely for much of the U.S. as temps set to jump. The 8 to 14 day temperature outlook well above average for much of the country. 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above average. I know this is not just happening in the States. It's around the world from Bolivia to South America, Australia, New South Wales, etc., etc. Spain. Okay. Again, I mentioned Australia. The east to west oriented jet stream flowing across it from Friday to December 25th is forecast to bring mild air and moisture to much of North America and prevents Arctic air from driving southward out of Canada. Okay, you got that? Well, apparently it's on the verge of rapid to collapse. Collapse from Fox using data here from other sources. Apparently, model predictions from uh, uh, Columbia State Climate School indicates that it may be falling into a neutral pattern. Pressure gauges indicate that El Nino is weak, so psych on the whole super El Nino thing. We'll maybe have to watch this one as it develops. There is no telling how and where this could go. Some models are predicting that it could lean towards more of a neutral El Nino because the trajectory is not well from visual capitalists mapped global temperature rise by country. This is using 2022 to 2100 based off the IPCC because things are developing fast and there's so many more elements that could accelerate this warming, not to mention not taking into account military missions. Okay, I don't want to go on a tangent. Look, in 2022, we're expecting 1.81 Celsius above our national average. Okay, skipping ahead, it says 2050, but imagine more like 2030, 2040 will be at this, and many places around the country in the world would be devastated. 
Accelerated sea level rise threaten coastal cities. Nearly all ecosystems face high risk of biodiversity loss. More on that in a moment. Extreme weather, left, right, and center. And then the really scary scenario, 3.8 degrees Celsius. You could see most countries would be just absolutely clobbered. Disasters left and right. Extreme heat. Floods. 3 to 39% of terrestrial species will face very high rate risk of extinction. Basically, it'd wipe out our whole food system. And it'd be, yeah, you can expect this probably by 2040, 2050, roughly. Put another way, there's the surface air temperature mentioning what I earlier out. This is another way of looking at it. And already, climate is causing 60% of plants and insects to fall out of sync. A study of more than 1,500 species in herbivores and insects in Europe spanning 34 years of data has found that 60% of insects are already struggling to keep up with plants they rely on because CC is advancing key seasonal timings, phenologies such as plant blooming or insect emergence early in the year at different rates. Yes planet cannot keep up with the rate of change that we are placing on it. In fact, biodiversity tipping point as first marine fish extinction declared. This charming looking creature, species of rare of ray, so rare that it's only been recorded back in the late 1800s have been de declared extinct after an assessment led by the Charles Darwin University. Um, the loss of the Java stingaree a small relative of stingrays is the first marine fish extinction as a result of human activity. So there you have it, folks. In just a few years, when this is going on, we will look back and say, everyone will wonder, well, what was the first? What did we destroy first? In the sea, at least. Okay. You can read this off yourself. But that's the gist. Meanwhile, California wildfires created toxic chromium. Many of you probably already knew this. Recent wildfires in Northern California tested samples of singed soil that were disturbed by their findings. It was laden, laden with cancer-causing metal called hexavalent chromium. It can transform benign version of the metal, which is found commonly in California soil, into a notorious carcinogen published in the journal Nature on Tuesday. Just imagine all the other things. I think climate risk analysis, when you think about exposure to wildfire smoke, so don't go out and breathe the stuff. Luckily, some cool science, I'm distracted here on the right side, there's always all kinds of fascinating scientific discoveries from quantum physics to light rays and everything else in between, but I, I can't get into all that. Great frigate birds wearing backpacks map the atmosphere. In case you don't know what a frigate bird is, it looks like that, right? You've seen them before. Well, you know, we can use satellites, which we do, and our own on the ground observations and drones, but a new field assistant, great frigate birds, kind of cool science here, live in tropical regions and fly about a mile to two and a half miles in this up, and a new study shows that great frigate birds equipped with tiny sensors can give detailed information about planetary boundary layer, which is the dynamic atmospheric layer that is closest to Earth and where we experience weather, air quality, and climate impacts. It's presented in the AGU annual meeting yesterday, and pretty cool that they're sending them up there and coming back with... Um, you know, novel approaches to use animal tracking data as if we haven't done enough to the animal kingdom. But meanwhile, about that whole, you know, action is now thing, well, we can just squash that because India's economy follows China to reach rapid takeoff. Published three days ago, these two fellows have an idea for world domination as India's been the world's fastest growing economy in the last two years and forecast to retain the top spot in 2024. So they both expect forecast to increase more than 6% in both 2023 and 2024. Okay, Ch compound annual growth will be slightly faster than China at 4 to 5%, five twice as fast as the world economy. And so they're just taking off 
all right, so what's this about action? How are we going to power all these people and feed them and cool them and transport them? In fact, Norway's second only to the United States and carbon capture subsidies to put the cherry on top. Norwegian government has spent at least $4 billion of public money out of more than $20 billion worldwide providing a lifeline for fossil fuel industry. One in every $5 was spent on CCS was spent in by Norway. EU spent 2.77 and only United States spent more public subsidies, 8 billion. Yes, but you have, you know, college loans and debts to take care of and meanwhile in Ohio and local news we're giving out 100 million dollars in grants to developments to stimulate economic growth because because none of this isn't real because we didn't not just experience the warmest Arctic summer on record, and mind-blowing Antarctic melt, and CO2 levels that which match the Pliocene epoch. Because none of that is real. Again, if you like this content, please like and subscribe consider going down to the PayPal donation link below. Try not to use YouTube thanks because I don't collect those funds for months. I don't see what you put there uh, because I can't cash out until I get to a certain limit. Even $5 going towards this informative content is well more than YouTube pays me in an entire month. So if you enjoyed it, show it. And all the other creators as well. They could use your support. Thanks, guys and gals. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.